Welcome back to Demystifying 5G, a video series brought to you by Roden Schwartz. Last time we took a look at the system calibration for over-the-air test setups. We discussed the methodology behind system calibration and demonstrated the gain transfer method using test and measurement solutions from Roden Schwartz. I'm once again joined by Alexander Nering, application engineer. Welcome, Alex. Thanks, Andreas, for having me again. Uh, great uh, to have you back. Um, I remember that when we started this discussion, we talked about the two calibration aspects, basically system calibration and device calibration, and used the example of antenna array calibration as the method of, for device calibration. Why are we doing that? Yeah, uh, array calibration indeed is a very important topic. And when we look at how an array antenna works just uh, shortly, we see that we have multiple elements part of the antenna and they are transmitting the same signal but with a little bit of phase shift in between. So we can directly see that by having this phase shift we actually steer the beam in a certain direction and um, in order to effectively steer the beam and knowing where it's going we need of course to establish a zero configuration when all the elements are transmitting the signal at the same point in time with the same phase. So basically we're looking for that uh, zero configuration. I assume there are several methods to calibrate an array. Do you see a trend in the industry? Uh, one method is basically addressing all the use cases. What, what is your take on that? Yeah, so there are definitely many different ways to do this. So essentially, as I mentioned, you're only looking for establishing the face and also amplitude information for each individual element. So how can we do this? Um, I summarized one of the ways to do this uh, as direct measurement of amplitude and phase. So straightforwardly, we just want to see what is my amplitude and phase difference between the elements that we have in the array. When we have a DUT with a connector where we can apply a signal, we can just use a VNA, switch the DUT to the different elements, establish the transmission parameter and compare them to have a relative amplitude and phase between the elements. This can be done connected or over the air and we don't even need a calibrated setup, we can do it directly. Um, if we want to have the frequency response again, calibration of the system is required. If the DOT has no RF connector, what do we do then? So we hope to have a DOT which has some signal processing capability, otherwise it wouldn't need a connector anyway. So the DOT um, sequentially applies the signal, some kind of test signal, CW modulated, it's up to the user, uh, to each element and then we measure the received power and phase that we get in our receive set. Again, conducted over the A both as possible. When we receive a signal and we want to see the phase, then we have to be either phase coherent to our DOT or we have to establish a way to track the phase to re remove the common phase error and the common frequency error. Um, this is possible, complicates it a little bit, but still not a big issue. If the DOT even has multiple signal processing units or can somehow apply different signals to different elements, um, then we can try to use the parallelization of this process to speed up the measurement and remove the need for the phase coherence. Because when two signals are generated at the same point in time, we receive them as the sum of the two signals and we can somehow discriminate the two signals, that's fine for us. So this can be used um, to speed up the process and we can try to use something like a FDMA or a CDMA-like approach, the same as used for multiple access. Yeah, when I look at your uh, summary here of uh, uh, me methods, and under the headline direct measurement method, so I guess there's an alternative? Yeah, exactly. So I just called it indirect measurement. So when we not measure the amplitude and phase directly, we can establish the phase relationship by just measuring the power. This may be useful if we want to calibrate the receive part of a DUT and it may be only able to receive the power. Um, so we can just make the same principle that we use for the beamforming activate two or more elements, change the phase relationship between the two elements and try out all the phase combinations. At some point we will see high power on the receiver, at some point we will see low power at the receiver and then we can establish what is my zero configuration. Okay, from, from your experience, is, uh, is there a preference measuring either max or min power? So generally it's easier to measure the minimum power because then we see a really hard drop in our pattern. Um, and then we just make a 180 degree phase shift between the elements to have the maximum configuration. Okay, so we saw now the overview and uh, direct indirect uh, uh, measurement methods to do an array calibration. I assume we could use Roden Schwartz instruments to 
do this method? Yeah, of course. So with the different instrumentation that we have, it also is the question of what is the user um, willing to use. Maybe they have instrumentation already. So we can do different methods, indirect and direct. The indirect method is already explained by my colleagues in some documentations. So I can show some direct measurement of uh, array calibration. That's a great idea, Alex, but this is a different topic in a different video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.